What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another episode of Bleed and BNG. I haven't done this for a while. But we've been in the doldrum of the summer, guys. And before we get too deep into this episode, if you're checking us out on YouTube, be sure to comment, be sure to like, be sure to subscribe. On the road to 2,000 subscribers, and I can't do it without you guys. And like I always say, I love interacting with you guys. It's the summertime. I'm a teacher. I ain't got nothing else to do. So I really mean it when I say that I love interacting with you guys. So make sure you guys are infiltrating that comment section. But most importantly, make sure you're hitting that subscribe button. But let's get into today's episode because I have a fun, exciting one for you guys today. To give you a timestamp as I do for all of my episodes. Today is Tuesday, July the 2nd, 2024. And as I mentioned before, we are in the doldrum, the dog days of the summer. These are some of the longest days of the year. But this is really the NFL's dry period. This is where it's like a, a, a desert town up there in the New York headquarters. Everybody is a desert town in Ashburn. Everybody is on vacation um, as they start to, you know, ramp up towards training camp. But luckily for you, you still got Bleeding B&G coming here to give you the most raw, uncut, and unfiltered analysis and to give you the best content on this here YouTube and on all your podcast platforms. So I have a, I have a fun episode I want to do today because as I mentioned, with it being the dog days of the summer, there's not too much information coming out regarding many, many NFL teams, let alone our commanders. I think the most exciting news that has come over over the last week or so is like, we're playing Where's Waldo with Brandon Ayuk and Jaden Daniels. I feel like that's the most important news that has struck up on the commander's radar over the last couple of weeks since the guys have broke from mandatory minicamp. But have no fear, Bleeding B&G is here uh, with a fun episode today. So while school might be out of session for most folks... Class is in session over here at Bleeding B&G with the Washington Commanders because we're actually going to be doing our Commanders Superlatives. We're actually going to be doing our Commanders Superlatives. So for you guys that have been in school, you guys know exactly what a superlative is. Think about the yearbooks. Think about, you know, cutest couple, um, you know, best smile, best dressed, uh, most likely to succeed and things of that nature. So we came up with six unique awards or um, categories for our uh, commander superlatives. And without further ado, let's get into this list. So like I said, I know class is out of session for most of you guys. So I hope that you're ready to come back to school just this one time. Spend some summer school with us over here at Bleeding B&G um, as we get into this list. Um, so our first category, our first category or our first award, our first superlative is the most likely to be an all pro in 2024. Um... And if you've been paying attention to a couple of lists, I know there was a list where they were ranking the roster where Washington didn't fare very highly at all. I think we were in the bottom five um, of the NFL when, you know, the, uh, whoever did the list, I'm sorry that I'm uh, missing the name right now, um, ranked all the NFL rosters. So it seems like we might have slim pickings for our all-pro all pro choice going into 2024. But without further ado, let's let's reveal the name. Drum roll, please. Brrr. Our most likely to be all pro in 2024 is right guard Sam Cosme. Right guard Sam Cosme. And here are some of the few reasons why we're going to be telling you uh, or why Sam Cosme won this award. As I mentioned, um, there's not too many players that have um, that can reach all pro candidacy or that we think going into the 2024 season have the potential of reaching all pro candidacy. Jaden Daniels is um, a rookie. You know, Terry McLaurin is battling in one of the most challenging and one of the deepest positions in the entire NFL and probably the deepest that position has ever been in the history of football. Um, I don't know if Brian Robinson is an all-pro talent um, and on the defensive side of the ball, we're bringing in so many new people uh, and we didn't sign anybody that was a Pro Bowl caliber or, you know, let alone all pro caliber um, last season. So I didn't see too many names. Um, so there was there was fairly slim pickings on this roster. But I went along with Sam Cosby because Sam Cosby was a third-rated guard per 
uh, pro football focus last season. And he was the number one rated guard throughout the second half of the season. Um, and, and, and it tracks out. Uh, Sam Cosby is a guy that's been very vocal this offseason, complaining about the scheme and the play calling last year with Eric Bieniemy. You know, he revealed that, you know, Eric Bieniemy was the guy that didn't allow him to wear his hat backwards and things of that nature. And if you guys have been paying attention, Samuel Cosby has been speaking out against Eric Bieniemy since in season last year. He wasn't a fan of Eric Bieniemy by any means. And I think the, the basis of it or the foundation of it is because he simply wanted to run the ball more. Uh, Sam Cosby is a nasty downhill type guy. I know he um, came out of you know, the University of Texas, um, and we pegged him over there as a tackle, even though most draft experts, or a lot of draft experts, I'm not going to say most, but a lot of draft experts said that, you know, even though he played uh, tackle at Texas, his best position in the NFL would be with uh, the uh, guard position due to his lack of length um, as far as his arm length, but he had some plus, plus athleticism. Um, he had one of the strongest bench presses in the entire combine, and when you look back at the film last season, it tracks out. It tracks out. When they were running the ball, the very few times that Eric Bieniemy ran the ball, it was probably by a mistake or Sam Howell probably checked out of it. It, it. it probably was by accident. But the very few times that we did run the ball, Sam Cosby was blowing dudes off the ball left and right. He was blowing dudes off the ball left and right. And this tracks out, um, as I said, with the film and the PFF grade. Because if you look... Um, there was a cut up. I forgot who did it. Um, but it was a cut out of Sam Howe, like a, a highlight reel, um, for what a highlight reel can be for an NFL offensive lineman. But they kind of did a highlight reel of Sam uh, Cosby's season. And if you paid attention to that highlight reel, most of those um, plays came from the second half of the season when we ran the ball a little bit more. We never we never ran the ball a lot last season, but we ran the ball a little bit more. Um, and that's where really, um, you know, Sam Cosby was able to show. His his chops and his athletic prowess. Um, he, like I said, he moves dudes off the ball. Um, he has pure strength. Um, he has good athleticism. If you look at his um, raw athletic score numbers, he tracks out as one of the most athletic um, tackle prospects, let, let alone guard. He tracks out as one of the most athletic tackle prospects um, in NFL combine history. The only reason that a lot of those draft experts were projecting him to be um, a guard was due to just that um, that arm strength. The same thing we saw the same um, the arm length. Excuse me. We saw the same thing with the likes of a Brandon Scherf, who was our last All Pro, um, you know, player to play on the um, you know Washington football team roster, right? Ironically, at the same position, and I think that you know Sam Cosby can have a similar career arc. Um, I think that he's a good scheme fit with a guy like Cliff, Cliff Kingsbury, um, who relies on his offensive lineman and to be athletic. So I think that having a pure athletic specimen like Sam Cosby in that scheme is not only going to you know help Sam Cosby, but it's going to boost his national narrative. As well, so our most likely commander to be an all pro in 2024 goes to right guard Samuel Cosby, and our honorable mention goes to linebacker Frankie Luvu. Um, just some small tidbits on why I went with Frankie Luvu. Uh, because if you can, if you've heard anybody, um, you know, if you've asked anybody, heard any interview from you know the offseason, everybody has talked about how Frankie Luvu is a player that impressed them. Um, just his, you know, injection of excitement, injection of work ethic. Um, everybody has talked frankly Lulu high, and it makes sense. Um, if you pay attention to his film last year, he was a baller. He was one of the best. Out, he was one of the best line, off ball linebackers in the entire NFL. Even if he didn't get the national hype or the national acclaim, um, and it was a reason why he signed one of the bigger contracts um, or the biggest. Um, I know he had the most guaranteed money of anybody in our free agency draft class because I think this is a guy that Adam Peters and Dan Quinn think can be a foundational piece um, that can be on the roster for a while. Um, and, you know, there's not many dynamic off-ball linebackers in the NFL because it's a hard position to play in the 2024 NFL. When you got to deal with all those RPOs and all those play actions and all that, 
Off ball, I, I, I do not envy anybody that has to play the off ball linebacker position, but that's why we don't see too many great ones in today's, um, you know, league. And that's why it's all more, uh, that should be all the more reason why it should be easier for Frankie Louvu to put himself in that acclaim, in that higher regard. Um, so, yeah, Frankie Louvu was honorable mention for the most likely commander to be an all pro in 2024. Going to our second superlative and going to our second category, it's the I ain't never seen you act like this before award. I ain't ever, ever seen you act like this before award. And this goes to a player that's going to have a breakout season. Um, this is going to be a player that is taking that jump, taking that leap in their career, and something that we haven't necessarily been accustomed of them showing throughout their careers of Washington Commanders so far. Um, and that player for us, the I ain't never seen you act like this before award goes to Cornerback Benjamin St. Juice. And let me tell you why. Uh, because I know Benjamin St. Juice has shown flashes. Uh, we were ready to crown him as CB1 after the Minnesota Vikings game in 2022 when he held Justin Jefferson to 130-something yards. But, you know, while he has shown those flashes, <laughs> um, it's since the sarcasm there, if you're not checking this out on YouTube. Um, but while he has shown flashes, and I like Benjamin St. Juice as a player, Benjamin St. Juice had a rough. He had a, a putrid two, 2023. His 2023 was putrid, and I don't think he's been that guy to live up to that third-round pedigree um, that we drafted him in in the 2021 draft. So for him to be, take a big step, I think that that would, that would be him making a career leap. And here are some of the reasons why he... Um, won this award. Um, he's in a contract year. Um, he's in the fourth of a four-year rookie contract. So he has to play well if he wants to stick in the league. Um, or if he wants to, you know, keep getting these big contracts. He hasn't signed the second contract yet. So if he wants to sign any big time uh, money um, to really cash out um, and really ball out like they do in those second contracts in the NFL, this is the year to show out. And he has the perfect coach to do it. Think of the guys that Dan Quinn has coached, um, the, the type of cornerbacks that Dan Quinn has coached. Think about the likes of Richard Sherman. Think about the likes of Trayvon Diggs. These are guys that have similar physical profiles to a guy like Benjamin St. Juice, who, who isn't the fastest, but they're tall, long corners who have exceptional short area quickness. Now, I think these guys have better hands than um, Benjamin St. Juice. That's why their interception numbers might be high. But if he could just simply be in position, if he could just simply be in position, that's an improvement from 2023. That's an improvement from the, his entire career thus far, if we're being honest. If he could just simply be in position to make a lot of plays on the ball. Because guess what? This is a guy that didn't have any interceptions in college. So we'll be foolish for him to think of him as a ball hog. I just need him to be able to shut his man down with that 6'3", 210-pound frame. Built like a goddamn demigod. He needs to be the guy that I need to be able to uh, match up against A.J. Brown, D.K. Metcalf. Because guess what? He has those type of measurables. He has those type of measurables. I'm not going to put little 5'8 Mikey Sanders still on there. And I ain't even about to put y'all boy on there because your, your boy up for another superlative. Y'all know who I'm talking about, but we're going to talk about him later. I ain't putting y'all boy out there on AJ Brown because we saw what happened last year. We saw what happened last year. So Benjamin St. Juice has to be that guy, and I think that he can. Joe Witt is like a secondary whisper. He's like a cornerback whisper. Because guess what? Even when he wasn't with, um, you know, Dan Quinn, when he was in Green Bay, the cornerbacks in Green Bay balled that year. Kevin King been ass since Joe Witt left. He had Jair Alexander playing like he was the best cornerback in the NFL. So he has the coach and he has the physical attributes. Um, you know, his short area quickness is off the charts. Um, his arm length is off the charts. He has everything you need to be one of the best cornerbacks in the NFL. He just... Hasn't done it yet. So with proper coaching, with proper development, I think that Benjamin St. Juice can take a big leap this year. Uh, so the winner of our I Ain't Ever Seen You Act Like This award goes to Benjamin St. Juice with our honorable mention going to safety Percy Butler. Um, some of the similar reasons that I gave to Benjamin St. Juice, St. Juice would be the reason why Percy Butler would be up for this award. He has a secondary coach um, or has a guy like Joe Witt. 
Um, looking over that secondary, secondary whisper playing under Dan Quinn. And this is the guy that they've been talking about in the offseason, that they've been pairing up a lot with Jeremy Chen. And I think that their skill sets match up very well. Um, I love Percy Butler's range. Um, while he's not always in the right spot, he gets there damn fast. And I would love for you to make a mistake at 100 miles per hour than 50. Um, so that's what I do like about Percy Butler. He plays with that reckless abandon, uh, abandonment and, you know, a guy with 4 3 speed having that type of deep post range and things like that you're going to need that with a guy like Jeremy Chen who's playing or more comfortable playing towards the line of scrimmage and in the box so I think that he has a potential to break out this season as well under the tutelage of Dan Quinn and Joe Witt um so yeah um Benjamin St. Juice and Percy Butler for that all right our third superlative our third superlative Kind of along the lines of the uh, last superlative, but on the opposite end, the anti. So our last, our last superlative was the, I ain't never seen you act like this. Shout out to my man, John Wall. Shout out to my man, John Wall, when he told Bradley Bill that in that post-game press conference. But this one was the he was who we thought he was award. He was who he thought we were. He, he was, excuse me, let me get it out. This is my own award and I can't even get it out. The he was who we thought he was award. Shout out to the late Dennis Green. And this is a guy whose poor play or the play that we've come accustomed to them exuding and exhibiting as a Washington commander. It just is going to continue in the 2024 season. So while the last um, superlative was a player that changed our minds, this is a player that just further ingrained our thinking of him, didn't necessarily live up to the hype, and by 2024, you're going to want him off of your roster, I promise. And this award, the He Was Who We Thought He Was award, goes to none other than y'all boy, I've already mentioned them, cornerback Emmanuel Forbes Jr. Now, I'm not here to bash on Emmanuel Forbes Jr. I'm not here to kick a dude when he's down, but I'm just here to tell you what my two eyes see and... Ron Rivera fucked this over with that pick. Oh, my God. And he really thought he was doing something. He really thought he was doing something right in the car. Well, you know, well, you know, if Forbes is there at 16, it's going to be hard to pick. No, what the fuck? It's going to be hard to pass up on Gumby. It's going to be hard to pass up on Stilt, like on Stretch Armstrong. Fuck out of here. What are we talking about? I never thought that Emmanuel Forbes was... Worthy of the 16th pick. I tried to talk myself into it. Being a fan of this dumbass team. Under the Ron Rivera era. But guess what? He showed me why he was never deserving of the 16th pick. In the next 16 games after that. Because he missed a couple of games. Um, due to his elbow injury. Because he's 130 freaking pounds. I'm trying not to cuss too much in this episode. But it's just the physical profile. 6'1", 170 pounds, and that's with 35 rocks in his pocket. He just doesn't have the physical makeup to match up in the NFL. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And and I'm seeing a, a trend going around, or I've been noticing a trend going around over the course of this entire offseason where everybody has made it seem like Emmanuel Forbes, all his issues were solely technique-based, and you're fooling yourselves. You're fooling yourselves. That man did not want to tackle a soul. That man did not want to tackle my grandmother running the alley. That has nothing to do with technique. That is all the fact that he knows that he's 132 pounds. Soaking wet. Oh, they're just throwing himself. Oh, oh, missing, missing hella tackles. If you're not going to guard your man and if you're going to give up 200 yards a game, the least you can do is tackle him when he gets the ball. He wasn't even doing that. And the reason why he's winning this award is because I don't think that's going to improve in the offseason. We saw him standing next to that 10th grader just a month ago. How much weight y'all think he gained in a year? I'll let you be the judge. I'll, don't worry. I'll wait. Don't worry. I'll wait. How much weight y'all think he gained? How much weight y'all think he going to gain in between that pitcher and training camp? And in between training camp and when he got to go against A.J. Brown again. We just think this shit's supposed to change? No, I know I'm kind of pouring water on my own fire when I mention the likes of, you know, them being the Benjamin St. Juice and Percy Butler being under the tutelage of Dan Quinn and Joe Witt. Well, guess what? They have the physical profile to, to be able to withstand in the NFL. Gumby, Emmanuel Forbes, don't. I'm sorry. 
I'm sorry. I saw everything that I needed to see last year. Because guess what? Not only did that that weak-ass physical profile that he had have him missing tackles, he was weak at the catch point. So even when he was there, the two or three times when he was able to check his man again, if they still threw it, he wasn't he wasn't batting the pass down because he can't he can't take a ball out of my hands. It's almost like you know, like when you take something from a little kid and you hold their forehead and like they really can't get it, they be reaching like ah 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 ah. That's what NFL wide receivers were doing in Emmanuel Forbes last year. Like the shit was bad. The shit was bad, and you're fooling yourselves if you don't think it was. That's not how a 16th pick in the NFL draft is supposed to look like. And I don't think that's going to change over the course of a year. We heard in all in the offseason at the uh, mini camp and at the OTA sessions that he was switching out with the first team. So they that already tells you that he doesn't have a spot on lock. He was switching out with, I believe, Noah Igbenogamy. So that already tells you he doesn't have a spot on lock. And then you hear that he's returning kicks. At 112 pounds? They giving him a career death sentence over there. Because guess what? They're just trying to get a return on their investment some way, somehow, for them spending the 16th overall pick on fucking Flex Washington. So I think I've given you more than enough reasons as why, you know, Emmanuel Forbes is the winner of the he was who we thought he was award. Because I really don't see too much improvement going on. I don't see him taking a leap. And you may and you may call me harsh, but guess what? I'll take it. And if you feel like I'm harsh, do your own video. Do your own video. But I can't I can't I can't put on burgundy and gold tinted lenses over with my two eyes saw last season from Emmanuel Forbes. And the honorable honorable mention for this um, superlative for this category goes to y'all boy, Fat Phil, Fedarian Mathis. Um, I felt like Fedarian Mathis was almost not relevant enough to put on this list, um, but I don't expect too much of a jump from Fedarian Mathis either. Um, this is a guy that's constantly injured. Um, this is a guy that we spent another high draft pick on with the second round pick, and y'all know how the history of you know, Washington and their second round picks go, whether it be Devin Thomas, Fred Davis, Malcolm, Malcolm Kelly, like, you know how the second round picks in Washington goes. But then you look at, you know, Adam Peters bringing in another second round pick in defensive tackle, Johnny Newton, the writing's on the wall for Fedarian Mathis. So I don't even think he's going to have the opportunity to make an impact. So that's why he was the honorable mention for the, he was who we thought he was award. So going on to our fourth category and our fourth award, our Fantasy Football League winner. And this is where you guys have all been waiting for. This is the person that you've all been waiting for. And that one is going to go to Q quarterback, QB, Jaden Daniels. Um, and I promise you I'm not trying to be a hype beast with this pick. I'm not trying to, you know, hype him up with this pick at all. Um, but, you know, Jaden Daniels, it's been a lot of hype coming out of Ashburn. We've heard Jeremy Fowler talk about how outside sources from outside of Ashburn across the league have talked about the potential of uh, Jaden Daniels being scary with this offense. And the reason that is being is that he can be dynamic with not only his arm but his legs as well. And we know how much a, a Russian quarterback is impo uh, how important a Russian quarterback is in fantasy, fantasy football if you play. If you play, you know that a good Russian quarterback is damn near like Teflon in fantasy football. And I think that Jaden Daniels is going to give you top three quarterback rushing numbers the foot he steps in. The foot, the day one stepping into the NFL, I think he's going to be top three in quarterback rushing yards last season. Fighting with Lamar Jackson and Josh Allen, right? So you're going to be getting the rushing yards. And the reason why I say that he's going to be your league winner is because his ADP right now isn't too high. I checked his ADP today. He's the number 11 ranked quarterback or um, going as the number 11 quarterback in PPR formats. And he's going as the number 14 quarterback in standard league. So if you run a 12-team league like most people do um, as far as fantasy goes, you're getting him towards the end of your draft. 
Um, and this is the guy that can potentially be your, the, the league winner. This is the guy that can potentially be the most valuable player on your team. Because as I mentioned, high-end scoring quarterbacks are Teflon in fantasy because that's the one position where you don't see too many variances as far as the stats and things like that. That's why rushing quarterbacks are so uh, rushing yards are so uh, important because that's the one you know thing that you that's the one uh, statistic where you might see a huge gap in between one quarterback and another and rushing touchdowns. That's why Jalen Hurts is a fantasy darling as far as fantasy football goes, but he looked like fucking dog shit last year. But he was still one of the top three rushing quarterbacks because all he had to do was scoot it in from one inch out. And I think that Jaden Daniels has some of that um, potential as a rusher as well. Um, so fantasy football league winner goes to Jaden Daniels with our honorable mention going to tight end Zach Ertz. The reason we went with tight end Zach Ertz is because if you play fantasy football, you know the tight end position is probably the most volatile position in all of fantasy sports. Um, because, you know, there's only three or four dynamic tight ends a year. And I think that, you know, Zach Ertz had, can have some uh, uh, similar type or uh, a late career, excuse me, a late career resurgent because they talked about the type of chemistry that he had with Jaden Daniels and OTAs and minicap. So if he can be somewhere in the top 12 um, tight ends performing this season and you draft him in the 14th and 15th rounds, 14th and 15th around, um, he has the capability of winning you a league as well. All right, our fifth and our second to last superlative, our second to last award because is the Did We Just Become Best Friends Award? And this is an award that players that show an amazing relationship and chemistry on and off of the field. Um, so in years past, this might have been an award that went to um, Chase Young and Montez Sweat, right? Because, uh, you know, they were practically butt buddies. These were guys that you never saw without each other when they weren't um, on the field. Um, so just to give you um, some thinking behind my thought process behind this award. And the recipient of this award for the 2024 season goes to running backs, Austin Eckler and Brian Robinson. The reason that I gave uh, these two running backs the did we just become best friends award is because I think that when you get to the end of the season, I think that they're close. They're the sh uh, split share of their touches uh, between handoffs and catches are going to be close to 50 50. Both seem like even kill guys that are easy to root for. Um, you know, Brian Robinson had his, you know, whole shooting situation going into his rookie year. So he's been a fan favorite since then. And Austin Eckler is just, he is hella charismatic. He's been doing a lot of interviews um, this year. And, and I, I even left a comment on one of those. I was like, Austin, and Austin Eckler can interview himself. Like, he's that good. So he's even kill guy. He's a positive guy. Neither one of these guys seem like they're going to be the guy that set the locker room on fire with their attitudes that they're not getting the ball, demanding touches. And they both have two different types of running styles. They're both two completely different types of running backs. So I don't think that they're going to be getting in each other's ways too much. Um, the only skill set that I uh, really see them overlapping in is like pass catching ability. But Austin Eckler is like one of the best pass and catching running backs of all time. So Brian Robinson would be a fool to get upset if he not catching too many passes out the backfield. And, um, you know, to, you know, take away from those touches from Austin Eckler because he's legit. And that's not me talking in hyperbole. He's legit one of the best in NFL history to ever do that. And I don't think that Brian Robinson um, would be that type of guy. But I think that these guys um, can actually be really, you know, dynamic this season. I think that we are going to be a run first team. I think that, hell no, it's not going to be anywhere close to the splits that Eric Bieniemy had last year, the 90 to 10 pass to run splits that he had last year. I think if we're not run first, I think it's going to be closer to 40, 60, maybe run pass, uh, 45 to 55, um, including some quarterback runs as well. But I think that everybody's going to be happy because we're going to be getting our touches um, and there's going to be enough uh, touches to go around. Um, so the, the, the Did We Just Become Best Friends Award goes to Austin Eckler and Brian Robinson with um, honorable mention going to Jaden Daniels and Terry McLaurin. Um, the reason that they were honorable mention is because I think that Jaden Daniels, I know that Jaden Daniels will be the best quarterback that, um, you know, 
Terry McLaurin ever played with. But I honestly think, and the reason that they didn't win this award, I think that Terry might be having to fight for some touches this year. I just mentioned how I think that they're going to be running the ball a lot this year, but with We've heard the coaches have been intrigued about Jahan Dotson coming out of minicamp. You know, we drafted Ben Sinat. Uh, we drafted Luke McCaffrey. So I think that Terry's going to have to fight for his touches. And the wide receiver depend, uh, position is a little more dependent on getting the ball than the running back position. But I think that Jaden Daniels and Terry McLaurin are going to have an amazing relationship. They just came second place in this award. And last but not least, our last superlative before I get you out, before dismissal for this summer school session today is our Teacher's Pet Award. And our Teacher's Pet Award, I know that usually has a bad connotation or a bad tag, but no, that's just simply a player that's going to come in and inject the culture, um, a culture that we can hopefully sustain and abstain for years on out. And it is a player that's going to come in and relay the coach's message uh, and be a clear communicator and a clear leader amongst the guys. And that player and the winner of the Teacher's Pet Award is going to go to linebacker Bobby Wagner. And the reason that I gave this award to Bobby Wagner is that this is Dan Quinn's baby, y'all. They've even mentioned it. Like, this is Dan Quinn's protege. Um, it's the reason why I predicted us to sign Dan Quinn in our free... I mean, this is the reason why I predicted us to sign Bobby Wagner in our free agency preview um, episode. And I know it made me look like a genius. And I appreciate all y'all that told me that I called that. But if you read the tea leaves, the tea leaves were there. Because Bobby Wagner said that he probably would be in Dallas right now if Dan Quinn stayed in Dallas. So he was looking to close his career out with Dan Quinn. Um, so... We know that he, he's a believer in Dan Quinn's messages. He's a believer in Dan Quinn's philosophy. And if you paid attention, just like Frankie Louvu, anybody, if you've interviewed Terry McLaurin, if you've heard Jaden Daniels be interviewed, everybody's talked about how Bobby Wagner, Sam Cosme's been interviewed and talked about how Bobby Wagner has already come in and made an impact on, on the team just by simply being his Hall of Fame self. This is a guy that has a gold jacket waiting on him. Whenever day he ends up, uh, he, he, whatever day he decides, to retire five years later he's gonna be a first ballot hall of famer so i will respect him too he would have my respect too so i totally get it um everybody else should just fall in line so that's why i went with um you know bobby wagner with the teacher's uh pet award and also he's playing a position that we dire we desperately need we haven't had good linebacker play since London Fletcher, because y'all going to try to tell me that Mason Foster and Will Compton was a good linebacker player, and I'm going to tell you no, it wasn't. But <laughs> he plays a position that we're in dire need of, and the middle linebacker position, always in, in the years of football, don't let this new age cute 2024 football shit let you think that the middle linebacker position isn't important. There's a reason why that position was glorified with the likes of Ray Lewis, with the likes of Dick Buckus, with the likes of Brian Erlacher, with the likes of Patrick Willis. I can go on and on. Don't let them make you think that the inside linebacker, middle linebacker position is obsolete because guess what? That's where most of your team leaders come from. Think of Roquan Smith. Think of Fred Warner in today's NFL. Um, so that's why Bobby Wagner, I went along and gave him that award with the runner-up being Dante Fowler. Because uh, Dante Fowler is a guy that's been following Dan Quinn as well. Uh, following him around in Atlanta and uh, the Dallas Cowboys as well. So you could, And he's an older guy. He's a vet. I think he's going into his 10th or 11th year. So this is uh, these are just a couple of guys that are... You can tell, um, not necessarily the sole reason or the number one reason, but one reason that they were brought in was to be able to inject, um, you know, Dan Quinn's uh, philosophies and cultures to the roster um, by relaying his message. And I think that that's what they're going to do. So that'll do it for our superlatives. Class is now out of session. I, I hope I hope that you enjoy your summer. Uh, but I'm not going to leave you for the summer. I have a lot more content to come out. But if you enjoyed this episode, please, 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 as I said at the beginning of this episode, Please leave a uh, rating. Please like, comment, and subscribe. If you're checking this out on audio-only platforms like Spotify or Apple Podcasts, please leave a rating or review, preferably five stars, because that's how we finesse these algorithms so that when you're searching anything Washington Commanders, Bleeding BNG is the number one content hub that comes up in your search bar. If you're not following us on social media, please do that. Our ex or our Twitter, because we still call it by his bi biological daddy's name, is at Bleeding BNG, B L E E D I N B N G. Our Instagram is at Bleeding BNG, B L E E D I N G, B N G. 
Um, and yeah, like I said, I'm not going to leave you for the summer. We got a couple more weeks leading up to training camp. And I promise I got a lot. I got a lot of content to push out. I got reaction videos to do, reacting to some of these lists. Um, and yeah, just make sure you tap into the channel because you're not going to want to miss any of it. Thank you guys for tuning into this episode. I'll check in on you guys later. Peace.